what we're going to be shooting into right now is the language, the hidden code of high vibration, the language of happiness, how you are hypnotizing yourself with your language into a negative, disempowering state, which is then leading you to take negative, disempowering, and self-sabotaging actions. Wake up, finally, work late, survive. So understand, the way that you communicate to yourself and others is an art form, where you're either putting yourself, hypnotizing yourself in an empowered state or a disempowered state. This is the thing that the most successful people know. They study this, how to keep themselves and talk to themselves so they feel empowered, alive, happy on this upward spiral, and the people who stay stuck at the bottom, unfortunately, just don't know about or haven't learned. And one of my favorite examples is one that Tony Robbins uses, where instead of, you know, I'm pissed off. You ever say that? I'm fucking pissed. I'm pissed. I'm so pissed. God damn it. Ah. He just says, hey, if you just change the word pissed, and just notice how that feels. Say it to the video right now. Like, say it. I'm Actually, pissed. I'm pissed. I'm pissed. I'm fucking pissed. Like, own it. You should be looking at I'm your so phone, pissed. your computer, like, I'm pissed. Pissed. And you just feel like this heaviness. Oh, I'm pissed. And just change it now. <laughs> pissed off. I'm pissed. Change it now, and notice if there's perhaps a shift. If you say instead, I'm peeved. Are you pissed or are you peeved? I'm peeved. I'm peeved. I'm, peeved. I'm so peeved. You can't even say it. In I this. am peeved. It's like, I'm this peeved. Just peeve me off. I mean, yeah, you just it's instantly feel lighter and you're probably laughing. Like, try saying it as, as pissed off as you can. Like, I am peeved, damn it. I'm peeved. You just can't. So that's just a simple example. Another one is, you know, this situation is fucked. I'm it's so fucked. fucked. I am fucked. What about using pickled? <laughs> you know, this fucked situation. Eh, it's quite a pickled situation. Very different. What are, what are some words that you, because it's funny you mentioned the word fucked. What are some ones that you actually use? Like, I'll, be, I'll often say, I'll, I'll be like, quite the predicament. I'll say that. <laughs> like, this is quite the predicament right now. Quite the circus. Is there any, what is any use for that? Pickled is my go-to. Okay. Or sometimes, because I've studied this a lot, I'll over-exaggerate it to the point where I find it quite amusing. Where it's like, it's over! It's over. The world will explode! Yeah, so you yeah, like go over kind of funny, the top. Or funny. you could go so far past fucked. Yeah. But, but those are some common ones. Like, I'm fucked, I'm screwed, it's over. Yeah, because you could even say, I'm fist fucked in the ass until I bleed. <laughs> And that can be funny because you got to figure out your style, right? I don't, we don't want to like make you say like peeved if you're not going to really say it, right? So you could, you know, you could say, uh, j just go with something that works for you is the point. Try saying it. I am this fucked in the end. Like I can't. It's got to make you laugh face. is the point. The dialogue has to make you laugh and make others laugh and you have to be aware of how you're hypnotizing yourself and others. Mm. But you'll see this. Like people are like, shoot me now. Just kill me. Fuck my life. That's coming on. FML. You'll see that all the time. Like there's no point like... Eh, there's nothing I can do. No point. Common. No point. Stuck. Ugh. That person's dead to me. Those words there. <laughs> dead to me. Absolutely insane. And once more, this is disempowering you. And you must learn to communicate to yourself and others if you want to move up and achieve massive success in your health, your wealth, your relationships, and more importantly, your overall happiness. So you want to stick with it? Kind of just stick, stick in there? Yeah. Then we can crack into those six specifics at the bridge. So I want to go back to when I was a kid and the way that I used to talk to myself and others as a younger person and then compare it to now. And I also want to cover the way that this is gonna affect your larger life because it's that important. Now, I can remember as a kid, I don't know what it was, but for some reason, I convinced myself that it was cool to be depressed and to be a victim. And I can remember, I think it started at one point when I got messed up in some spelling thing that I was doing at school, and I just made this big fuss about it, and I got a lot of attention from my parents and from my teachers to try to make me 
not feel so bad about it. And really what that taught me was the bigger victim I would be, the more that people would be nice to me. So if you've ever done that in your life, try to pinpoint back to when you're younger, to where you had this learned behavior about making everything very embellished in a negative way. And maybe what need that would have served you at the time, but we're also gonna talk about how it's not helping you right now. So that's what happened to me. And I can remember that I was just very, very good at deliberately including anything negative into my vocabulary or thought patterns. And I would listen to, to people like Trent Reznor, Nine Inch Nails, or oh, yeah. Billy Corgan from Smashing Pumpkins. I think these are, I mean, what's so crazy with those guys, these are some of the best musicians of all time. In my view, they're so incredible. I still listen to their stuff right now to this day. I think it's incredible. But I would literally train myself lying in bed like, ah. Hurt myself today. Me too. <laughs> to see if I still feel I focus on you know the he pain. Didn't that song, right? Oh, that's true. That's a good point. But he made it no, so. No, he did compose it. No, I think it's like Johnny Cash's. It's like some older guy. I think or Johnny Cash like, did a okay. cover of it, or he did a cover. One of them did a cover. Okay. Well, he did a great job of emoting it, right? And I'm just like, I focus on the pain. The only thing that's. Real. I can remember even uh, Courtney Love, who I wound up living with later at Project Hollywood, had, I think she had an album called the Slit Wrist Album. And it was like this, this picture of like these slit wrists. And as a teenager, I think I got that right. I'm not quite sure. But as a teenager, um, we can make a whole video on stories from that period of my life too. That could be fun. But anyway, they, um, the, the thing that I learned was the more depressed you are, the more, of a, the, the more that you're winning the victim Olympics, the more that people would give you attention. And so for that reason, I would always, I, I just continually had this vocabulary about how messed up my life was. Now, I wanna fast forward to me sitting here at 39 years old, and we're sitting here running a business, an eight-figure business that is very, very complicated. And I wanna put in perspective for you that very rarely is there a day that I wake up out of bed and there's not a very serious problem. I mean, there are, balls getting dropped left and right and and every year I learn to get better with it and I learn to build better systems and to avoid that so don't get me wrong you don't want to be like that in perpetuity you want to get older and fix your systems but every day of my life I mean there are fifty thousand dollar mistakes hundred thousand dollar mistakes that could be getting made at any point and if you're running a business where you've got people worldwide all over the world there's different things happening there's a lot of consequence at stake if every single time something goes wrong you go into the, ah, hurt myself today. Good luck. <laughs> Good freaking luck surviving like that. So if you want to be a business tycoon or if you want to be somebody who accomplishes anything at a high level, you've got to understand there's going to be a lot of different obstacles that come up. And if you don't learn how to talk to yourself and sort of in the same way that you might hypnotize yourself in high school, like, ah, to see if I still, okay, you're, you're literally spending hours training yourself in the victim Olympics. If you don't learn how to train yourself in the opposite way, your ability to accomplish big things in your life is going to be very, very limited. You're also going to, here's the big one, you're going to alienate the cool friends and the high status friends that you want to make. And those are people that can offer you incredible opportunities. You're going to push those people away. You're also going to hurt your health. Your actual inner dialogue is going to mess up your health. Just look at something as simple as what's called the placebo effect. When someone thinks they're getting better, half the time they get better. That's why in any medication trial, they've got to measure the placebo versus the actual medication. And oftentimes the placebo is nearly as effective or even sometimes more effective than the medication. So in your health, your relationships, your business, how about just your purpose here on earth? I mean, life is so short and if you're gonna waste it playing the victim Olympics, Man, is, why even be alive at all at that point? Why not just end it if you're gonna, okay, just kidding, don't end it, just learn how you're hypnotizing yourself. And the, the craziest thing in this too is that we've had friends that have committed suicide and a, a, my cousin Dylan commits suicide and we, we've known other people that have committed suicide and what we, like if I could, if, I just wish I could bring them back and say, wake up, look what you're doing to yourself, man. What are you doing to yourself here? You're making yourself crazy. They're in a dialogue that is just so dark. And I realize that, that in many cases it can be more complicated than that, but understand that you can hypnotize yourself into an incredibly disempowered state where all that the person would want to do is just end it all, let's see how fail. Or you can hypnotize yourself into an empowered state. And the key here is that when you've hypnotized yourself through your vocabulary into an empowered state, now you can be that leader who's the calm amongst the storm when things are getting crazy. You can be that person like, like how do you get paid a lot in life? 
you build systems where there's a lot of different things happening that are producing money. And if you're the person who's building that and leading it, you now have the ability to make a lot of money for yourself. And then you also talk yourself in a way where you could enjoy it and you're healthy and you have better relationships. So this is very, very important to really look at, at how and why you're doing this so that you can live the life of your dreams. You can live an excellent life. This is your life. How are you going to treat it? So that being the case, right now, before we even go any further, I'd like you to, to find your why. Why is it important for you to learn this type of content? How will your life change and how will it reverberate? Because you've got to understand this becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because the way that you talk to yourself becomes how you talk to others, which then reflects how they talk back to you, which then creates your actions and it becomes a loop. Another question to ask yourself here too is, what is that go-to little pocket of energy you're just pulled into every time something doesn't go your way? You know, for you is more of the victim Olympics, as you said, like the Trent Reznor, you know, I hurt myself today, what is yours? Is it the victim, or is it perhaps the person who's just really pissed off and angry? And instead of Trent Reznor, you're blasting Limp Biscuit, like fuck the world <laughs> All great artists too. <laughs> or Marilyn Manson, you're like, yeah. I mean, fuck that, I remember the, uh, growing up, a lot of kids were listening to Marilyn Manson, there were like those rumors, like, you know what, the drummer smashes little animals, like was it chicks or something, mm -hmm. like little chicks on their fucking drum, yeah, fuck the world, there's no point, man, burn it. And that would be their go-to. Everything, something didn't go their way, doesn't matter. Fuck the world. As opposed to poor little me. What is yours? And you can just do an audit on your life right now. When something doesn't go your way, what do you get pulled into? And notice how strong that pull is. You know, when you get sucked into that, you're going to start looking for more reasons to fuel it. That's how crazy it is. Like one little thing will just, yeah. and you're like, Trent Reznor kicking in. You're like, what can I do to amplify the sound of Trent Reznor? And you're gonna look for more reasons why you're feeling sorry for yourself. You're like, you know what, this thing happened, this person was late, such a victim. You know what also sucks? Just life, having to get a job. Man, I'm such a victim in this other thing in my childhood. And again, memory is state access dependent. You're gonna remember all these other situations and it's just this downward spiral. And you're gonna start manifesting it too. Someone will reach out and try to help you. You're like, no, I'm just the victim, alienating them. And then you're gonna use that to reinforce, yes, I'm just even more of a victim and it's endless. Similar to if you're really angry, not even in a pocket, say you're mad right now, something really pisses you off and you find out the reason that you're mad is actually wrong. There's no reason to be mad at all. There's still that pull. You're gonna be like, no, but but still. That's just like a micro level, this is macro. When you're angry and you're blasting the music, you're fueling it and it really takes over. And you're gonna look at, you're probably gonna turn on the news to amplify that. You're like, oh, and fuck this. Remember all the people that screwed you, get even more mad. You're probably gonna call them and try to provoke them to get even more mad and it's just endless. You're and trying people, to reverberate with it basically. Yeah. You're trying to find someone to reverberate with it. Even if they try to give you a hug, it's like, no, no. If they're even trying to hug you, you don't even want physical contact. It's yeah. not feeding it. I mean, a situation that stands out for me is I remember back when we first met in the, the early years, um, I went through a breakup. And I don't know if you remember this, like there was this girl, I like moved in and it just ended. And uh, I was like, literally I was like, oh, it's all over. You know, she broke up and it was after a travel. So yeah. yeah. So yeah, so you found me at our friend's place and I was like, I don't have a place to stay anymore. My life is over. Just look at that wording there. My life is over. Is it? Like, is it actually over? I, I was literally in that trance. I'm like, my life's over. I'm just going to drink. And they just had like this vodka, orange juice. And I'm just sitting there. None of them are drinking. It's just me by myself in this little trance world. Like, my life is over. Vodka, orange yeah. juice. And you walk in. You're like, what the fuck is this? So you're like, no, man, snap you out of it. Let's go out. Let's go socialize. And I'm like, there's no point. So I just stroll out, just literally all sad in that trance. Like, vodka, orange juice, snot. And it's like, go say hi to them. And it's like, try to get me out of that pocket. And towards the end of the night, I did get out of the pocket. Now, again, this doesn't mean that every time, you know, you go through a breakup, it's just a pocket. Of course, it's an appropriate time to grieve, but it just really shows you those different, you know, pockets of energy or realities you can find yourself in and how you do. I mean, it really helped that external force just pushing it like, whoa, you know, it gives you that perspective. Like it was this trance. And like you said, I mean, the biggest trance of it all to get a little dark here is the one where people unfortunately like commit suicide. It's like you're just in this dark trance, it takes over, and then when you snap out, you're like, what was that? Insane. Yeah, people that, that actually um, make a failed suicide attempt often, they're, they're like, oh my God, like what was I, like, oh shit. Like they got, like their software got in this fucking loop and they can't, 
get out of it. And then eventually if they, if there's, this is a pretty deep topic, but if they fail at it and they wind up living, which is the optimal outcome, obviously, then what happens, they're like, whoa, because the loop stops. Mm. They're like, oh. Yeah. Again, you're just in this trance. But on the flip side, again, someone who's successful, what is that inner dialogue? Like when those things happen to them, it's not like my life is over. It's the end of the world. It's, ah, I will figure a solution. Let's keep going. It's like the dialogue is very different. And that is what we're going to move you towards here. So identify the pockets. What is yours? What's the pull? How is it affecting your life? And let's get you out of it. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to cover is a sort of hypothetical model that I don't really know if it's true or not. So there's some things that we know are true or that we're highly, highly, mostly certain are true. And then there's some things that I don't really know if they're true or not, but I take it as a model because when you follow the general model, it can still produce a result. So this is kind of a model that we're going to teach you that even if it's true or not, can at least produce a cool result. And that's the basic model that I like to call the force field model. <laughs> so, right, it's like some guys go by like, that's the force the field. Force field. <laughs> Star Wars nerd. Uh, <laughs> yeah, some like <laughs> typical like Chicago Midwestern people. So the people from the West Coast are here to talk about the force field. And the force field model, <laughs> basically what it is, is you have, imagine you have a force field around you that stops negative energy from coming in you. Imagine that negativity was almost like negative spiritual entities that are floating around that when you get negative, you start to attract them because you resonate with them and they clump onto you like little leeches. Imagine that. And they're another floating around right they're just now. floating around okay and if you and if you begin to if you're like really positive then like happy little positive spirits jump on you and if you're negative these naughty little negative ones jump on you and they just suck the life out of you and whatever you resonate with you kind of draw these towards you so that being the case you want to imagine that your force field around you has different holes in it there's these different holes where negative energy can get in there and the basic holes that we look at is approval, control, and safety. And those are the three, those are three classical ones, right? Yeah, in the spiritual okay. world, you'll see this everywhere, like approval, control, security. Approval, control, safety, security, you know, survival, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so what can happen is whatever is negative in your life, you can often break it down to like, like I know for myself as a man, it's like, I couldn't control this. I can't just make it do this and it drives you crazy or like that person said this about me I didn't get the approval or maybe something makes you feel unsafe now some other ones that are amazing is also self-attack you just uh, it's like another hole in the force field. we're kind of just adding on to these you can add on your own you can make your own force Little field, force field <laughs> so basically again another one is self-attack where the negative energy is just boom you start self-attacking yourself and I think there's a degree to which spiritual type people can avoid self-attack a little bit too much because they don't let something land Mm. They mess up and they won't let it land what they did and own it, take the lesson and move on. Yeah. And then there's other people, which is most people who self-attack too much. So there's sort of a balance here and everybody is at a different space with self-attack. But self-attack's another one. So again, lack of safety, lack of control, lack of approval, self-attack. Now another one, and this is massive, and really it's anything that takes you out of the present moment is not knowing what's gonna happen and looping on it. So it's like, well, what's gonna happen with this? I don't know, I don't know. And you keep thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and the energy gets denser and denser and it creates this sort of frenetic or discombobulated energy where you're looping on something where you don't know what the answer is right now. Another one is just any kind of general attachment. You have too much of an outcome towards something or an aversion to something and that aversion to something or outcome to something, again, is shoving you in your head. So you wanna think of these as anything where you're not present to the moment, and anything that that anything that's shoving you into your head, it's making you loop in your head. And then from there, the way that you want to think about it is that negative energy attracts or attacks you through your thoughts. So when you're in your body and present to the moment, okay, when you're out of your head and in the present moment, it's very, very hard for negative energy entities to attack you. Again, in our little funny force field model here, our hypothetical one. And in our and, and when you're in your head, it is very easy to attack. And that's why people that are often are very logical and very in their head, you can see the life being sucked out of them because negative energy is having its way with them. It is literally just pumping them, just taking them, having its way with them, and they are under the spell of negative energy. So what we want to do here is, again, we want to be thinking about 
control, approval, safety, self-attack, not knowing what's gonna happen, attachment or aversion to anything, just things like that. And again, you can make your own triggers because you could also argue that every individual throughout life will get these other holes through their force field where the negative energy can get in. And by the way, this is a little bit off topic, but my theory is that if that were true, because I don't know, but if it were true, I believe that people with personality disorders, like dark triad, whether that's um, um, sociopathy or it could even be um, a borderline personality disorder, what I've observed in people who experience that is that they often, the negative energy seems to have, almost like in the movie The Matrix, where it, a, a, a cable is like plugged in the back of their head, the, the negative energy almost has a cable right in the back of their head. There is no force field at all. And that's why they also say with this force field thing, is that when you drink or use drugs, mm. what winds up happening is that the negative energy is like, oh, they're messing up their force field. Let's let them do it. And the negative, so when you start doing things that hurt you, the negative energy goes away, you feel euphoric, it punctures holes in the force field and later there's more your, your force field is like Swiss cheese and then what starts to happen is that people who have long time history of uh, drug use often commit suicide so if we look at say Chris Cornell um, the guy uh, Chester Bennington Robin Williams um, Avicii and many others what happens is that they've had this party lifestyle which they're having a lot of fun I guess right I mean probably incredible amount of fun but the consequence of it is it just punctures punctures, punctures, punctures their force field and later in life and sadly even after they've cleaned up they develop this kind of like relationship to like, have you ever seen the show Dexter? He calls it like the dark passenger. There's almost this relationship to the low vibration energy and it just winds up taking them. Happened to, I think Anthony Bourdain also used to party pretty hard is my understanding and it can even get them later in life. So you've got to get really, really good at building that force field through food choices that you make, lifestyle decisions that you make, many other decisions you make. We'll make lots of videos on this, but also the big one that we're covering here and we're going to get a lot deeper into is your dialogue. The way that you're thinking and the way that you're expressing yourself and the way that that's reverberating and creating all these self-fulfilling processes. You want to be the master of your own reality here. You want to be the master of your universe here and you've got to become aware of this. Yeah, and if you just want to notice too how you'll just take a hit by those things. Notice how you feel right now. Notice the thoughts you have. And what comes up when you hear me ask you, what are all the things you're trying to control right now? Just notice the shift. All the things in your life you're trying to control. Control different people, different outcomes, things you really wish, oh, I hope it goes this way. Whew. Trying to control it. Control how people perceive you, how they feel about you. Control your life. All the little things you're trying to control. Control yourself, what you're feeling, what you're thinking. Just take a moment to take that in. Like, wow, all the things you need to control, the heaviness that comes from that, or the need for validation, for acceptance, for recognition, for love. What comes up around there? What are all the different things you try to do for that? You know, trying to dress a certain way for approval, acceptance, validation, acting a certain way, living your life a certain way, saying certain things, liking certain things, you know, putting on this little front, trying to fit in. How does that run you in your life? or the need for safety, security, like financial worry. Do I have enough money? Am I gonna be safe? Am I gonna be secure? Do I have shelter over my head, a job? What if I lose my job? Thinking about the future, what's gonna happen? What's the answers? What if I don't know the answers? And then self attack over that. You don't know the answers. You should be like this. Why are you so pathetic? Why do you procrastinate? Why do you let control, approval, safety, security, and not knowing the answers run you, you little shit? On and on. What are all the different ways you self attack? What comes up around that? Or attachment, aversion? The things you're really hoping will happen or not happen. The people you're hoping you'll see, they'll like you, or you just wish you don't see them. What comes up around this? And just sitting into this now, you're probably a little riled up. And that's how it gets you. Right now, we just opened up a couple holes or we brought your awareness more so to those holes. And that's what you gotta fix. When you're in this state, it's very easy to start looping for one of those little and that's the thing too, by the to way, get so you. I, I thought I'm gonna die before, and the weirdest thing when you lie there thinking you're gonna die mm. is, wow, all that energy, and I'm dead anyway! All that! Yeah. It's Damn really, it! Yeah, I've not had the, the near death like that, but it is said like either in a near death or some kind of life crisis situation, there is a glimpse where they just kind of all yes. disperse and you're like, whoa, like this is what I actually care about and what, you know, it's like even the people you're probably chasing right now, it's like, it's all about them. Like if you died and you reflect on your life from the perspective of you being dead, you're like, what was I doing? 
those are not the people I actually care about. It was these people, people who always had my back and I might not have been there for them as much as I should have. It just brings a lot of clarity. It's like all those parasites are gone and you're like oh, left with the real you. But as long as those holes are there, they're running you. And probably even right now as you're watching this, they're just attached to you, just sucking the living shit out of you. <laughs> They're on your arm, they're right there, they're everywhere. So let's remove them. <laughs> so up until this point, we've covered the language aspect and we've covered the way that negative energy gets in you and kind of drags you around. And we do wanna wrap this with some very, very practical examples, but to really understand those, you've gotta understand the underlying framework of how your mind is working. There's these different frames or beliefs, these meta frames, these overarching frames in your mind and the way that this is programmed in your mind is like software and if you have a lower level of software that has sort of this weird output. Now, the first software that we really want you to look at here is what we call the competitive versus collaborative frame. Now, let's look at that within social dynamics. Let's say that you go out to a bar or club and somebody teases you. One way that you can think about that is, they're assaulting me. They did an, a, a microaggression or some kind of assault on me, some kind of crazy thing on me. The other way that you can view it is as ball busting and joking around and bonding. So if I go out and somebody teases me, if I view it as they're bonding with me, I joke around with them back or maybe even tease them back and we immediately go into laughter. With that laughter, all of a sudden, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because, and here's where it gets so weird, the same person who when they insulted you at the bar or club, if you would have taken it in the competitive frame and maybe insult them back or get defensive, this is what's so weird about it, that same person would then believe that that insult they said was real. Like if they're like, you're a short, oh, and you're a balding ginger. If I'm like, yeah, whatever, like, screw you. Now they're like, yeah, that's a short, balding ginger. I hate that person. But if I'm laughing with it and going along with it, maybe I'm getting them to kind of rub my head or something like that, you know, say like, you have man boobs. And I'm like, and then, you know, next thing you know, we're kind of like playing with it and having fun with it. Next thing you know, that same group of people, now they're coming up, they're playing with their boobs or something. You know, they're getting all crazy and everybody's having fun because now all of a sudden you're cool. And then the self-fulfilling prophecy is, I was just kidding when I said that. Now notice that the same person who was maybe insulting you will reframe it in their mind that they were kidding and love you if you have that competitive, if you have that competitive versus collaborative mentality, right? If you go into a bar or club and there's all these different people around, you might feel like you're under assault as very exhausting, or you might feel like you're amongst friends, which then it enlivens you, then you talk to everybody, then everybody is your friend. Versus when you're under assault, you come across kind of weird, and then as you're coming across weird, other people think you're weird, and it's more of an assault, and it's a battle, and it's a war. So you can see how these basic level underlying frames determine the way that you're gonna interpret things, the way that you're gonna act, which then creates this reverberation effect with the outside world. The same thing is, do you believe the world is happening to you or for you? Life is happening to you or for you? If you believe that life is happening to you, you go into this crazy victim frame, you've been victimized. And as a victim, how do you feel about it? You're mad, you're angry. Fuck this, I'm screwed, I'm pissed. Victim frame, okay, what if you believe that life is happening for you? It's all a lesson that maybe you even chose before you're born, and then in that case, oh, this thing happened, what's the lesson here? And immediately, you just release the frustration, you start finding the lesson, and what happens when you, what happens if you have that mentality for say 20 years? You get a lot of lessons, versus what happens if you have a life is happening to me mentality for 20 years? You're just really, really pissed, and because of the fact that most people that are older do believe the world's ha that, that life is happening to them, they've just had the life sucked out of them. You can see it in their face, their pupils, their demeanor, their energy. They believe they are under assault. They're con continually in competition and it is sucking the life out of them. Again, it's not the one time, it's the accumulation of these little interpretations and then how the interpretation affects you emotionally, how that affects your biochemistry, your health, wealth, relationship, higher purpose, how then you act to the outside world, how that makes them act to you and it's this continual loop. So as we go into the specific things that you're saying to yourself, the, the language of high vibration of low vibration, I want you to first think about the underlying meta frame of it and the way that your beliefs and inner software is programming you. Yeah, and you can even tie this back to that force field we talked about. I love that word, mm -hmm. that force field, where if you take this need to control, you know, must always be in control, what's the underlying frame? It's like, if I'm not in control, bad things are gonna happen to me. You know, if I'm not in control, 
the world will attack me. It's me versus the world. And to defend, to cope with that, I must always control everything. So there's massive lack of trust that things are happening for you. It's like they're going to happen to me unless control. The same with approval validation. If I don't get approval, people are against me. I must get approval. I must, I must live up to it. I must get that validation. It's you versus people. Same with safety and security. It's like, what, what if this happens? I need the money. I need the money to be safe. As opposed to trusting that perhaps the world has your back. Life has your back. The same with the future. Worrying about the future. What about trusting that you will find the solution when the time comes? As opposed to projecting yourself way too far ahead where it's impossible to have an answer and then self-attacking over that. Mm -hmm. Self-attacking. You versus yourself. Attachment aversions. I need this to happen or else. You can really tie all of these to that competitive versus collaborative. So some questions to ask yourself here is, can I allow myself to trust again, to trust people again, to trust the world again, and to trust that they have my best interests at heart. Can I allow life to happen for me? As opposed to, I can't trust it, I can't trust it. Can you trust again? Yeah, and I would say that part of what, what why people struggle with this is because, let's say that initially you're a very innocent person and somebody screws you over, you begin to learn to have boundaries, and that's a good thing. So I've even seen it one time, this girl who I know, she said, you know what I've learned? I've learned that I'm gonna treat people exactly how they treat me, and it feels amazing. I'm not gonna take shit anymore. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stake my claim. And for her, that was growth, because she's letting too many people mess her around. But I think as a grown adult, if you're somebody who's powerful, you can trust that you can be open, and if somebody does kind of screw around, you're gonna be able to handle that. You're gonna know, what to do in your next step. So it's a position of power. It's often people that are very weak that are always afraid that they're being manipulated, right? I'm not gonna let anyone trick me. And see, I'm not so much worried about getting manipulated because uh, go ahead, like do that if you want. I would find that interesting. <laughs> like, try it. Like that'd be kind of funny to watch you try to do that. So it doesn't, it doesn't impact me. And ultimately, this comes down to a lot of the spiritual mumbo jumbo of oneness versus separation yeah. and that underlying belief of oneness is actually in a strange way what allows you to not be getting hit with this this outside input that then messes with your mind competitive competitive and then you have this output that is reverberating these negative circumstances so what we want to do next is actually go into the specific language and look specifically at more examples of how you're using this language and kind of conclude with the bigger picture of your ultimate vision for yourself So let's start with the to me versus for me. And what I want you to do here is a little exercise is think about all the stuff that just kind of pisses you off. The stuff that pisses you off, that stresses you out, that makes you mad in life. And for the next 20 seconds here, indulge me, just kind of dive into this. You know, I'm pissed off that cold weather exists. I'm pissed off about the traffic, about my boss, this fucking guy. I'm pissed off that I have to work pissed off that I can't sleep in. I wish I could sleep in. You know, I wish people would smile more. That pisses me off. Pisses me people off. People are so to make negative. Money. Yeah, I have to make money to live. That's fucking annoying, isn't it? All the shit that pisses you off. And you just feel that energy, that momentum building, just kind of dragging you down. Now let's stop, okay? And let's shift this. Can you go over that same list of things that pisses you off, stresses you out, and find a way to perhaps be grateful for them? All the stuff you hate, can you find a way to appreciate them? And if you go over that list like, you know, I'm pissed off about traffic, could you perhaps be grateful that, you know, you have a car to be stuck in traffic, that cars exist? If you have a job that you're not a fan of, a boss you hate, could you be grateful that you have a boss to hate? Things could be a lot worse. And just that little shift there, if you go over that list, and I'd really recommend doing this, writing it down and then taking each point and finding a way to be grateful for it, just shifting perspectives, you're gonna sense yourself perhaps smiling more, feeling lighter and moving up. So that's just one example, and you sense there's a certain language that brings you down and another language that brings you up, and you feel the energy. Like even here, it could be very easy to be like, you know, it pisses me off that it's cold. God damn, it's so annoying that we're out here in the cold. Or, you know what, I'm grateful that I'm able to record a video out here. This is amazing, and suddenly, oh, 
there's that life force that comes back. Okay, to me, little victim, as opposed to for me, gives, gratitude, appreciation. It gives you a new appreciation for California. Yes, you know, or just grateful for cold weather, just the experience of cold weather. Mm -hmm. This is very unique, you know, to have my fingers freezing. This is amazing, as opposed to why is my fingers freezing? Oh, brings you down. Okay, so that is one example. The second thing you want to bring your awareness to when it comes to your language is facts versus stories. Okay, are you talking about facts, what actually happened, or are you obsessing about the story you created around those facts? And there's a great book that breaks this down called Crucial Conversations. A must read for any human being. Anyone. If you got anything out of this entire channel, <laughs> read Crucial Conversations. Yep, Crucial Conversations. You're not living like if you haven't read this book. Whatever you're reading now, put it down. Crucial it's conversations at the top. Mm -hmm. Okay, so make the difference. You know, it's like say as an example, facts versus stories. You're it's, it's Friday. It's the last day at, at your job, and you know you leave, and it's about you're about to head into the weekend, and so you get an email. You know what? Everyone important meeting Monday morning. Very important, and you, you just see that in the email. You're like, oh, what's happening? And then it's like, you know what? And and uh, John, I want to talk to you specifically. You. That's the fact. There's an email saying, hey, there's a meeting Monday. John, you know, you or whoever you are, um, there, you have to be there, specifically you. And your mind might be looping like, oh, man, maybe I'm going to get fired. What did I do? What are they going to say? Oh, my God. <sighs> Bringing you down and you're focusing on a story that you created. It's not the actual fact. Okay. So instead of obsessing and, you know, adding to the story, which we do, oh, and then if I get fired, then this, and what am I going to do? And, uh, and Trent Reznor comes back in. Oh my God, it's <laughs> the end. It's all over. Uh -huh. Stop yourself there. Focus on the facts. The same with uh, someone texting you. I mean, that happens all the time. That's probably one of the best examples. Like how many times you misinterpret a text message. You're like, how dare they? When that was not the intention at all facts yeah. versus stories and another great concept that goes with this is seek first to understand then to be understood yeah and you know this stories versus facts thing is the people that are great consummate professionals and are class personified God they have this sound God, why it's ruined why is this happening? we're out here in the cold a personal attack mm. to me god damn mm -hmm. it so what you have is that People that are consummate professionals, okay, class personified, they understand that when you start attaching stories around some other person's behavior, you're, you're often gonna make it much worse than it is. That story could be about someone's intentions, like they were probably thinking this, and they did it for this reason, because they're like this, and they wanted that to happen. And they're, they're essentially doing that as a way to feed the negative energy. And if you were to speak in a more measured fashion about facts, this is what happened. Just stick to the facts of what happened without adding in all of their intentions and secret plot lines and whatnot. Well, yeah. the facts is more measured. People that are great professionals, they're able to keep a more measured set of facts without putting their interpretations, biases onto it. And when you do that, it essentially has this neutrality to it, this kind of Zen-like neutrality that's not feeding the yeah. thing that's going on. So, so it's not just focusing on the story, it's even when you talk, Try to avoid speaking in stories because oftentimes the stories you create are meant to trigger the other person and it brings everyone down. Yeah, and where this gets really interesting is like what you would talk about in Transformation Mastery, people have certain traumas and a common trauma is I'm not appreciated, I'm undervalued, you're going to abandon me. People There's are the going to disrespect me, mm -hmm. take advantage of me, you know, like betray me, think I'm stupid, mock me behind my back. Yeah, it's like those big ones, like untrustworthy, again, stems from that fear and that lack of trust. Yeah, it's really, really, really gonna get at you. And because you most likely do have those traumas, and I hope you're aware of it because I've had a great opportunity to work with a lot of different, incredibly intelligent people over the years, and even the smartest people you'd meet typically have these, and they're often unconscious to them, and you're probably unconscious to a lot of the ones that you have right now. You remember we said earlier that we said that if you're in your head, negative energy entities can attack you, but when you're in the body, it can't attack you as much? When you're focused on stories, the negative energy can attack at that story a lot more easily than when you keep it in facts. So think about it in the same way that in the head, more likely to get attacked by negative energy when you're present to the moment, less likely. It, pro it provides a force field from it. In the same way, when you stick with stories, 
um, that is actually feeding the negative energy. It's, it's more apt to kind of go in these weird turns and twists to where you can interpret it in any way you want, then start to feed it. By the time that you see that person who you've been make, making the story about, you are livid with them. And what's funny too, I, this is sort of a, another funny side point. I've seen it over the years, people do this towards me, where they make this, they make this kind of crazy story in their head. And when I'm not around, they do that. But then when they see me, they kind of remember that we did have fun and we did have a bond. And they're like, you'll see them kind of do that. They go, Owen, hey. And then they, they're like, wait a minute. But I made this weird story like with my friends behind his back. And then they're like, oh, wait, I'm, I'm mad now. You know, right? And you can yeah. see it where this story that they've been feeding during shit talking, it really winds up messing them up. And you, I mean, you can even say that with shit talking in general. Whenever you talk shit on somebody behind their back, what you're doing is signaling to other people around you. What are you showing them? That you're gonna talk about them when they're gone. If you wish to have the people who are present to have your back, have the back of people who are absent, okay? Want people that are present to care about you? Don't talk bad about people who are absent. Again, it's just feeding it. Why do people bond over shit talking? Because it feeds it. Instead, when you're talking about someone who's not present, either A, don't talk about them at all, wait until they get here, say, you know what, why don't we wait until they get, get here, we'll talk to them about it. It's incredible how many times that whatever negative thing you thought about that person was untrue, once you hear their story. And then beyond that, you can maybe just straight stick to facts. Now, once that person does come, again, the old Stephen Covey principle, also emphasizing crucial conversations, seek first to understand, then to be understood. If you say, if, say that your dialogue, your way of talking to somebody is, hey man, I noticed this, and you're not adding any reactivity or tension in the tonality, you're not standing above them, you're in a neutral space with them, you say, um, could you just let me know your thoughts on X, Y, Z? They now give the thoughts, you listen patiently. If they spoke for five minutes, you then maybe give a 30 second or so or so summary of what they said to show that you're listening. Say, did I get it? Maybe they feel actually that you didn't get it. They repeat themselves in, in a different way. Okay, well, now I'm gonna summarize it. Now did I get it? Okay, you got it. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Um, would you like to hear my thoughts on it? Well, man, once you sat there listening for five minutes to someone, they probably for sure want to hear your thoughts on it. Because what people have is this, this fear of getting kicked out of the tribe. It's a primal fear. And they feel like if they go into defense and start making excuses, that then they'll be um, you know, kept within the tribe. And so people contract. When they contract, they often refuse to apologize. They start making excuses. They'll show their intentions. So you want to learn how to keep people out of contraction. Keep them in an expanded state. Don't make them feel like they're at risk of being kicked out of the tribe. Don't activate their amygdala. Keep them in the prefrontal cortex. A lot of your language, you've got to ask yourself simply, is my language shifting me into my amygdala or my prefrontal cortex. And when you're in that reactivity, it is so rare that when that, like, like the reptile part of the brain is functioning, it's gonna be like, rawr, rawr. there's very rare times that anything good is going to come out of that. So again, just looking at how you're interacting with others, how you're talking to yourself, what part of the brain are you activating and what part of your spirit are you feeding? And to build on that, the third thing with the whole, you know, facts versus stories, sensationalizing things are those words where you sensationalize different events using the word, like we said before in the beginning Fucked of this up. video, Pissed. it's the end of it. My life is over. They're a fucking asshole. They think they're so cool. Yeah. I mean, what is that? It's like, my life is over. Like say me with that breakup or something bad happens, like fuck my life. It's all over sensationalizing it and again feeding the story around the fact which isn't necessarily that bad so catch yourself what words are you using how many times a day are you like fuck my life i wish my boss died i hate my job why does it shit out? like start catching it and try to remove the charge from it focus on the facts as you said a more neutral ground and the fourth thing are just the general topics you know, are you focusing on, say, higher vibrational topics of conversation or interest or lower vibrational? You mentioned before, like, bonding over, you know, talking behind someone's back. That is extremely common, like gossip. Like, people do that. They'll try to seek rapport with you by dissing someone else. And they can't just seek rapport. It's called triangulation. Yep. It's like, hey, so who are you? How's it going? It's like, no. Hey, you know that other person? There always has to be a common enemy that bonds the two of you. So that's one. It's like, huh. Does that turn me on? That's the question you should ask yourself. Like, does gossip turn me on? Resonate with it. Does bad news turn me on? Do I resonate with bad news, horrible things happening? What do you click on on your web browser? What kind of news articles do you click on? What kind of videos do you click on? Is it the clickbait title? Like, you know what horrible thing this person did? How this person lied to me? What's wrong with this person? Ooh, versus, hey, here's a great message. Positivity. This will help you. This will benefit you. How to improve your life. How to self-actualize. 
you know what's fucked up about them? <gasps> you know? What do you resonate with? Start noticing it. And once more, just making that audit. Huh. And perhaps making, at first, a conscious effort to not engage in those topics, those interests, is an amazing first step. And of course, to get to the cause, you must release that trauma. You must dive into what's running you. But catching these different ways of using that language with yourself and others is the most important first step. Yeah, I'd say that ultimately, when we say that your language, your way of speaking to yourself and others is an art form, so few people take conscious control of the way they're thinking and the things they focus on and the way that they're putting output into the world. So you wanna become a master of everything from reframes. So for example, something bad happens to you, begin immediately reframing it so that what you're focusing on is the lessons or what, it, what cool opportunities or silver linings that it could be pushing you towards, right? They so call you, it, don't shoot the messenger, look for the message and be thankful for the message. Identify the message, the benefit from the situation or the person. Yeah, again, coming back to how, imagine 20 years of being a victim versus 20 years of getting lessons and how that accumulates over time. So you wanna be looking again at your language as an art form, are you, talking about things that feed negative energy? Are you using vocabulary that is very story-filled or sensationalized? Are you using vocabulary that's making it worse than it is? Doesn't mean you have to make it necessarily better than it is, but don't make it worse than it is. And just always being aware of how you talk, how you think, the way that it's making you feel, and is it empowering you, disempowering you? Is it making you stronger or weaker? Is it bringing you up? or bringing you down. And don't self-attack over this either. Be like, mm -hmm. oh man, I'm not using the perfect vocabulary. Self-attack, because then you fell in that same trap. Mm -hmm. Yep, just build on it over time. And a uh, great point, by the way, great vocabulary there. Oh, I can't do this, versus I'm learning. Right, always going on that folks, right? Oh, I lost my girlfriend or boyfriend. I'll never love again. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm experiencing something painful. I wonder what opportunities that could open up. Who knows what could happen? You don't know what's gonna happen in the future. You don't know what bigger picture something has, right? If you're looking at a painting and there's a black blob, well, that's just a black blob. When you're looking at the black blob, when you back up, that black blob is the part of the bigger painting of your life. And when that's recognized in your language, that's also flowing through your thoughts, through your output, and now you're reverberating in an upward direction. reach a certain point of growth where you can see that this will help you. It's typically the people who need this the most that sadly they can't see it or even feel like they're being tricked. Oh, you're trying to turn me into a fairy. That's going to be great. Awesome. Fairyland. This is not about fairyland. This is about your health, your physical health, your immune system. This is about the people who you might be alienating, high level people that are enjoying life that you're pushing out of your life. This is about business situations that you could be messing up and dropping the ball massively. This is about you making more money because you have extended focus. Your brain neurochemistry is balanced properly because you're not making yourself freaking crazy. You gotta stop making yourself crazy and you have to learn the art form of how you're speaking to yourself and others as a starting point. Now, you can try to push down the beach ball under the water and hold it down by consciously manipulating language and that's the best first step maybe that you could do point blank period, I'm not sure, but definitely one of them. At the same time, as you get this down and you start reaping the benefits immediately, because you're gonna see immediate benefit from this, you also wanna be working on what's going on inside of yourself so that you're not always kind of deviating towards this, this issue of your language, right? So you wanna focus on the outer game of shifting the way that you're thinking and talking, but then also notice how as you do that, you feel in a better mood, but then also you wanna focus on your mood by doing things like letting go of trauma, doing transformation mastery, working on your inner game, and as you let go of trauma, you're gonna feel better, which makes you stop talking like that. So it's kind of like there's this big clock and you wanna throw a monkey wrench anywhere that you can. What we focused on here was the outer manifestation and shifting shifting it and how that'll make you feel better, but also even going deeper, you wanna be looking at things that are gonna allow you to let go of trauma. Transformation Master, I think is incredible. I've been blown away. Really though, anything that you can do to boost up your inner game so that inside yourself, you're not resonating with that kind of language. It's, you're not feeding something that's you're not in control of, okay? Your life can get so good once you have this down. I am so excited for you. Not just because you're gonna get better results, you're gonna make more money, have better people in your life, 
but also because you're gonna have more fun and you're going to enjoy the result. Really, you wanna be a results-driven person. So maybe last thought also is to metricize this. Metricize how much you're talking about this. Start, start journaling and looking every day the extent of how you're using your language and maybe even start metricizing the types of people that you can see you're attracting or opportunities versus when you're not. Yeah, you're gonna start seeing results fast with this. And like you said, use this as a first step but don't forget to address the internal. You know, reframes are great, but you wanna know what's even better than having to reframe something? Having nothing to reframe, just having it be the default. I mean, this is why we keep pumping this message so strongly, because it will produce so much change and so many actual results fast. Okay, so use this as a first step. Focus on that language, start journaling. So much as self-awareness while simultaneously diving in, releasing trauma, fixing the internal, and your life will go so high. It's gonna be good. And thank you so much for sticking through this video. If you've been through this, you're clearly ready to have a major transformation. Sometimes you just need one person who believes in you. You've got two, two. people right here. We believe in you, you're gonna make a big change. Thanks for watching the vid, and we'll be back with more very soon. Peace.